Takashi Miike is one of the most notable and controversial directors working today. He works with many taboo and bizarre subjects and attracts attention through shocking violent works. Although Miike is known internationally for his horror-like elements, he has worked in many different genres, often combining them in a unique way. He was born outside of Osaka, Japan, and began directing in 1991 when he was in his early 30s. According to his biography on IMDb, he went to film school but hardly ever attended class. His first films as director were mainly straight to video, but he gained international attention with his 1999 film Audition. It started out as a subtle drama, but ended as surreal horror with the main character getting tortured and his foot brutally cut off. The violence was considered highly graphic, thus garnering attention for the film. This trend continued with 2001's Ichi the Killer, which contained even more blood and gore, and was filled with depraved acts of sadomasochism and torture. A character is tortured with metal hooks stuck in the skin of his back and gets burning oil poured on him. The main character slices off his own tongue, and a woman gets her nipples cut off. According to The Guardian, the film even, quote, required three minutes of cuts by the British Board of Film Classification because of its extreme sexualized violence. Many of Miike's other popular movies, such as Visitor Q from 2001 and Gozu from 2003, didn't make traditional narrative sense and were filled with disgusting acts. For instance, in Visitor Q, a man has sex with a dead woman, feels wetness, and then assumes she is miraculously responding to him, only to find out that the wetness is feces. In addition, Gozu features a fully grown man coming out of a woman's vagina. These films and more have caused Miike to have a strong cult following all around the globe. It is understandable, then, that Miike became known as a horror director whose films showcased extreme violence and sexual content. Disgusting and violent movies seem commonplace in today's film world, but he takes it to a whole new level. No subject matter or action is off limits. Miike even had a small role in Eli Roth's Hostel from 2005, which was a graphically violent horror movie referred to by many as, quote, torture porn. Miike's reputation as a horror filmmaker was so great that he was allowed to direct an episode of the Masters of Horror TV program in 2006, which has featured episodes made by John Carpenter, Dario Argento, and other directors known for horror. However, is this really an accurate representation of Miike's films? IMDb lists 82 credits under his name as director. This includes TV episodes and straight-to-video releases. Only eight of his films are categorized as horror. Three of the eight are the previously mentioned Gozu, Visitor Q, and Audition. The others are Happiness of the Katakuris, One Missed Call, Izo, The Great Yokai War, and Detective Story. Miike's segment of Three Extremes from 2004 is also categorized as horror on IMDb. However, even these films defy the traditional standards of horror. Audition is only horror for a half an hour at most, and Miike himself does not consider it to be a horror film. He was quoted as saying, For me, Audition is not horror. At least, there is no monster. It's not supernatural. It's a story about a girl who has just slightly strange emotions, so it's not impossible to understand her. Audition is really more of an art film. Fans of traditional slasher movies will likely be bewildered by the last half hour and bored by the first hour or so. And Gozu and Visitor Q are far removed from a typical horror film. Furthermore, The Happiness of the Katakuris combines horror with elements of the musical and comedy genres. Only One Missed Call, which was eventually remade for American audiences, seems to be a straightforward horror flick. The truth is, during his prolific career, Miike has worked in a wide variety of genres and tones, often mixing them in bizarre ways. He has made many Yakuza crime films, such as Shinjuku Triad Society, Fudo, The New Generation, and Full Metal Yakuza. Surprisingly, he even directed a superhero movie called Zebra Man that was released in 2004. His film The Great Yokai War is a children's fantasy film. He's directed action, comedy, thrillers, fantasy, and science fiction. He sometimes creates movies that are mainstream and easily understood, 
while at other times he makes dense art films. For example, his segment of Three Extremes is quite confusing and contains an ambiguous narrative. He seems to jump from genre to genre with ease. In fact, he appears to not even be concerned with genre. He was quoted in MidnightEye.com as saying, I don't think about genre at all. My films are categorized as being in a certain type of genre. But myself, I don't make the movie thinking about which category the film belongs in. The playful mixing of genres is a key aspect of the Miike body of work. Many of his films contain scenes that seem like they're from a different movie, and tones often shift drastically without warning. When referring to his film Gozu, Miike stated, What I really wanted to try to do by having these two elements in Gozu is to find that there's a new genre, combining two different elements and tr try to challenge something that didn't exist before. So in a way, having kind of two genres together, there's so many possibilities that you could do, but not having a genre, it's more that I can try to do something different by having the different elements from the other genre. The diversity of his films is much greater than most filmmakers, yet he still injects his personality into his work. He is far from a director for hire that just does what his producers tell him to do. His movies also take postmodern ideas to an extreme level. He seems to make no distinction between high or low art. One of the most interesting examples of his mixing of genres is Sukiyaki Western Django, which combines Western and samurai elements into one movie. There is gunplay in one scene, and then a sword fight in the next. The film also contains many historical references, as well as homages to earlier films by directors such as Akira Kurosawa or Sergio Leone. Django also mixes comedic and dramatic elements. The Japanese cast speaks heavily accented English, which adds to the humorous aspect. For this movie, Miike cast Quentin Tarantino, another director who mixes genres, high and low art, and references numerous other films. Both also use pastiche and play with the concept of genre. All of these aspects make Takashi Miike a perfect example of a postmodern filmmaker. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.